is up guys it is thursday january 15th today will probably probably be our last session of the week and unfortunately we had another losing session yesterday a small one lost around 325 to 50 dollars uh we were up for most of the day and then uh towards the end these two hands came around so uh, the first hand is we're on the button and uh, so we have a ragfish who's in the uh, under the gun so he opens for 20 and there are uh, three other callers and we look down on the button with pocket queens two black queens so uh, we uh, three bet to uh, $135. Wanted to make it look like a squeeze, a steal, whatever. And then under the gun, tanks, 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 tanks. It goes all in. Of course, we call. Flop comes. Let's see here. Uh, eight of diamonds, four spade. King of Diamonds, turn comes the Five of Diamond, river comes a Two of Diamonds. We have no diamonds. Under the gun, flips over, King Queen of Spade. Hit his top pair, double up through us. And now we are at break even. A few hands later, we are. Uh, under the gun plus one. Under the gun limps. We look down. We have two black kings. So raise it to uh, $40. Co comes around to uh, a player we'll call Super Knit Fish. Let's say conservative. We hate to call it nits because uh, that's just a derogatory term. So this very ultra conservative player, three bets me to 135. At that point, I just went fudge. This is not good. Can we lay down kings here? Pre-flop to one bet. And the answer is obviously not yet. We can't. So I call. Flop comes. Jack of Diamond, Eight of Clubs, Seven of Spades, all rainbow. I check, he bets 125. At this point, I'm asking again, can we lay it down? And the answer is no, unfortunately. I call, and the turn comes, another Jack. I think a jack of clubs. So I see the uh, the conservative player kind of uh, get uncomfortable. So I check and he checks. And the river comes the uh, two of spade, a blank. Decision time, right? What do I do here? If I check here, I give away the strength of my hand. It's obviously that I don't. I'm checking. I, I don't have a very, I have what I look like, queens or kings. So I check here, and he bets I could probably lay it down. But I did a block bet instead. I bet 105, and that was the price that I thought that I was going to call if he bet anyways. So uh, i probably save myself maybe $20, $30 if uh, he was to bet on the river. Because I know his uh, river beds tend to be small. And after I bet, I turned over to the under the gun player and said, I don't think I'm good here. And of course, he calls and flips over two black aces. Uh, I just shook my head, tapped the table, racked up my stack, and went home. Another losing session. But, 
that's not the end of it. When I went home, the hand resurfaced in my mind. Something didn't feel right. So then I thought back about the play and I made a pretty bad mistake or I missed some opportunity. If we know this player is a ultra conservative player, that board texture on the flop combined with the turn gave us an opportunity that had if we shove on the river we had around seven hundred and fifty dollars left and the pot was around five hundred and thirty dollars so we need a success rate of around fifty eight percent on this shove to break even my read on this players calling frequency on a shove or folding let's just say folding frequency on a shove is around 7.5 out of 10 times that if I shove here he will fold that gives me a success rate of around 75 percent I need a break-even rate of around 58 percent that gives me a 17 percent edge on this shove way too much edge to be giving up if we're talking about casinos are built on two to three percent edge and sports books are built on five to six percent edge a 17 percent edge is way too much to be passing up I missed this opportunity the second better the even better play here was when the jack came out I could have let out for two hundred and fifteen dollars or two hundred five dollars into the five hundred twenty dollar pots I know he will call so then I get to pick up that extra money and then I have five hundred dollars left to shove on the river confidently that with the same frequency that he will fold with the same frequency so I pick up an extra two hundred dollars and I steal the pot by turning my hand into a bluff these were uh, plays that I should have been able to make I let my the results of the previous hands and the run bad dictate how I played well not really dictate but it clouded my perception and my vision and my ability to see this spot so we're all human and humans right when we run bad we play bad and I am no exceptions and this is a case of not seeing a spot because my vision has been clouded by my results orientation so that's it for the day let's uh hit the gym and See you in a bit. Hey guys, so we are back for uh, the contemplation and reflection time. So uh, let's use my uh, what happened to me as an opportunity to uh, reflect. So earlier I said that um, my perception was uh, disoriented and my vision was clouded because of a previous hand that I played. Um, what does that exactly mean, right? So, uh, what happened? I froze, right? I was not able to execute on a play. But what caused me to freeze? A thought. The thought that I just lost a hand. The thought that if I lose this hand, I would, I would be down for the day. 
So it was a fear, fear of loss, right? The fear, fear arose in me. But where does this fear come from, right? This fear came from a previous hand, a previous event. And it has no substance whatsoever in relation to the current hand, the current moment. So why did I let that affect me, right? Well, obviously because we're human and uh, we ne with negative uh, emotions and feelings arise in us, it causes us to uh, act in certain ways. So this was an uh, this is an opportunity for me to uh, recognize that my actions were affected by a fear which had no substance whatsoever. And if we can if we see this in a poker hand and we could see this through and we could uh, reflect on it and go back to its origin then we've done something positive right we were able to uh, identify the causes of our actions and our thoughts so when we use this opportunity and we and so how do we uh how do we work on ourselves in order to uh I guess prevent this from happening or alleviate the situation in the future. Well, by recognizing the situation and seeing this and acknowledging it and being aware of it, we perceive what is actually happening. We have a clearer vision and understanding of what is going on. And this understanding through the through experience, like I could, we could, I could tell you about fear and all this and what you should do. But until you've gone through the experience itself, it will, it will only be concepts and intellect. It won't be experiential. And these are things that you need to experience in order to come to understand it. So when these situations arise, if we can see through it and we can see the emotions that uh, arises with these situations. And we can watch our emotions. Slowly, the emotions we dissipate, it phase out. And then we recognize the, uh, and see what happened. And each time that this happens, if we go back and reflect on it again and again, the next time it happens, we'll be able to perceive it better. We can see it happening. And then we can then go on to reflect on it and let it dissipate. And we reiterate that situation over and over again. And then once, if we keep doing that, what happens? We develop a pattern in ourselves. Okay, I recognize this. I mean, I sh should do this, this. And then once we iterate that pattern over and over and over, the pattern becomes ingrained in us and it, we de it develops into a habit. And this is, these, this is the learning stages, right? We go from the unconscious incompetence, I don't know that I don't know, to the conscious incompetence, I know that I don't know. Now we've gone to the next level, I know that I know. And this is where the real learning comes in because we iterate and we learn, we develop good habits, we build patterns for ourselves that we can iterate to ingrain in ourselves to become habits. And as these habits, as these habits and tendencies build up in with us, we, we move to the final stage, the unconscious competence. I don't know that I know. And at that point, it's autopilot. It's like driving. You, you don't know that you, you know that you don't, you know, you don't know that you know, right? Because you, it's automatic, it's autopilot. You don't sit there and have to think, I got to gas, brake, pedal, drive left, drive right. It's autopilot, automatic. And in your poker game, that's where you want to be. If you could build up certain patterns on how to play certain situations over and over and over repetitively, it becomes a pattern, it becomes a habit, and you know how to execute this play without having to think about it. And that's, what, that's when your game shifts the bell curve over so that the majority of your game is in the, uncon is the, is in the unconscious competence level, not the unconscious incompetent level where you don't know what you're doing. Now you know what you're doing, or you don't even need to know what you're doing because 
it's all auto, it's automatic. You you know what to do. You know the right thing to do. And if we take this to real life, then we can start applying the same concept, right? In situations that we know we tend to mishandle, then we should set up a pattern, a way for us to handle things. And then when the situation rises, we execute the systematic pattern that we have developed for ourselves. And through this repetition, eventually we were able to know how to handle situations, such as when somebody criticized you. You, re you have to, re when you realize that these are just words and these are just opinions, and then you stop and you see and watch the emotions and the thoughts that come arise, and you just watch it. You don't do anything. You don't judge it to be positive or negative, good or bad. You just watch it, and you see where it came from and where it goes. And you, what you're going to realize is that most of this stuff has no substance. It arises based on our perception, and it also goes away based on our perception. So, I hope what, I guess you could say, my failure in a hand, and I hope that uh, breaking it down can help you to uh, see that these are stuff that you can also do and to uh, improve in both your poker game and life. So this is going to be our last session for the day, for the week, and then it's time to uh, go be a dad and hang out with it and, and put in uh, dad time, which is the fun part. All right, so uh, I tried to uh, log the results of the week at the uh, end of the day, but uh, we're going to try to push it for a long session because we're behind in terms of hours and <laughs> win rate. So I'll see you guys later.